Okay, let's look at this glass board problem. Um, and I apologize, this looks blurry on my screen. I think that your PDF looks, uh, you can uh, read a lot better. Um, all right, we want to determine the greatest load P right here that this beam can support without causing this um, A992 steel member BC to buckle. Um, and so I don't know if you can uh, see this or if this makes sense, but the way that it is um, pinned right here, um, we can consider the support supports to act as pinned and pinned against XX axis buckling, but fixed and fixed against YY axis buckling. All right, so this is pinned and pinned against uh, for the strong axis, strong axis bending, but fixed and fixed against weak axis bending. All right, does that make sense? If you got a thin ruler right here um, and see how there's a slot right here, there's a slot right here. Um, it's it, it's going to be harder to bend it there. It's it's fixed um, in that direction, but it is pinned in the other direction. Let's look at these dimensions. It didn't really give us a a look right down the barrel of this, but this is three inches by one inch, right? Three inches by one inch, one by three. So <clears throat> let's see. Here's our X, Y, um, the I, X is 1 12th B, H, cubed. This is 2.25 inches to the fourth, but the I, Y is 1 12th 3, 1 cubed, just 0.25 inches to the fourth. All right, and so this I, Y is the weak axis, this IX is the strong axis. And so for the strong axis, it's just pinned and pinned. But to kind of help brace the weaker axis, it is fixed, fixed, and fixed. Okay, so in general, we use a smaller I when all things are the same, but the strong axis and the weak axis are are supported differently. So we we need to test them out differently. I'm gonna find the largest force P um, that will buckle the pin to pin strong axis. Then I'm gonna find I'm gonna separately find the largest the, the smallest force P that will buckle the fixed fixed weak axis, compare the two, the maximum force, I'm gonna choose a smaller one. Okay, but this force P is not the axial force P in here, is it? Um, I've got to do a little bit of statics, not much, but I've got to do a little bit of statics right here. Let, let me draw my free body diagram. I've got, if I've got a force P right here, I've got an AY and an AX. I've got a compressive compression um, force right here compression pushes right um tension always pulls if it's in compression it pushes on that beam so we've got four four this is at a three four five angle um just by summing the moments about a i don't need to start with some of the forces in x some of the forces in y but you could but summing the moments about a ax goes straight through it a y goes straight through it the um, four-fifths component goes straight through it, but the three-fifths component of F is acting four feet away, right? This, this component right here is acting four feet away, creating a positive moment, and P is acting eight feet away. Uh, some of the moments equals zero. So anyway, the, the axial force inside of the column that I'm interested in is 3.33p and this is how I like to, I like to do my statics first 
go ahead and even though I can't solve it ex exactly for the numerical value of the force inside of that uh, column, I can write it in terms of P right there. Okay, so just reiterate, this force P is not the internal force inside of this column. I've got to write the internal force in terms of P. Okay, now I'm going to test out the strong axis pinned and pinned and find P critical. P critical is 3.33 P is equal to pi squared E for A992 still is 29 times 10 to the 3 KSI. That would be given. Now the stronger axis, 2.25 inches to the fourth over, it is pin, so this is 1. Uh, the length is, you can't really, 3 feet by 4 feet. This is 5 feet. This is 5 feet, which is 60 inches squared. There, there we go. All right, so then I would get a force P 53.72 kips. That might be my answer. Um, so when I apply a force of 53.72, then um, my, um, my column buckles along the strong axis. Let me test the weak axis. Weak axis. The weak axis is fixed and fixed. That's a K value of 0.5. Uh, so let's see how that changes. 3.33 P pi squared. Same material, so 29 times 10 to the 3 KSI. But in this um, orientation, um, the I is the weak 0.25 inches to the fourth divided by a K of 0.5 times 60. Be sure to square that. Be sure to square that. All right. And so that then I would get a force P of 23.9 kips right there. That might be my answer. All right. So which one does it buckle first? Which way does it buckle first? It buckles right here at a force P of 23.9 kips. <clears throat> um, but I still needed to show all my work and test the stronger axis because it's not the same, right? The stronger axis was pinned and pinned. So if the strong axis is different than the weak axis, test out both of them um, to find the... Um, Find the force that would cause the column to buckle. So here's my answer. The column will buckle at 23.9. It will buckle about the weak axis. Even though it's supported a little bit better against the weak axis, um, it's still going to buckle against the weak axis right there. All right.